Man, people are loving those t-shirts. Loving them. They're beautiful, and they're getting them for, you're getting two for under a dollar. Yeah. Holy Moses. So this is how you get it. You enroll in MAPS, and uh, excuse me, the RGB bundle or the MAPS Super Bundle, which are the two big bundles that we have, and you can pick mm. your pick, right? Any two shirts you yep. want for under a dollar? Yep. Excellent. This is at mindpumpmedia.com. All right. We got some uh, t-shirts to give away. Give away some more shirts. Yeah, we like to do that. Fly, fly away shirts. Where are our reviews? 23. Oh, wow. Not bad. Boom. That's not, huge. That's not bad. And we're going to give yeah, away six shirts. Six? six shirts. Say that three times fast. Yeah, six exactly. shirts. Salivating. <laughs> Who Do gets we... this shirt? Six. All right. So <laughs> let me read these people off. We have Lorando with lots of O's. Moon Dave 15, Mega Vega, Carissa hey. Lee Fitness, Snyder Inc., and 15 Noodles. Oh, mm. yeah, there's three noodles in here. Four, <laughs> if you count Doug. Yeah. How do we get? How do they get their shirt, Doug? All right, they just mm. need to say send the name I just read off to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go: Mind Pump. Mind Pump with your hosts Sal De Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Oh, ooh, 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 there I am. Ciao. Oh, I think I sound better. This changed. This, this made my mic ay, sharper. Ay, 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 ay. What did? This new seating arrangement. It made it sharper? Yeah. I don't think they're related. Sharper? Sharper? Sharper. Is that? I'm, sh- I'm certain I read that in the library. No, no, sharper. <laughs> sharper is a real word. <laughs> it's crisper and more clear. Crisper. Um, I can you can you can't say sharp there. You, can say you know I like this new small chair that I'm in. Yeah. I feel more secure, homey. No, just secure and safe. You well, look. It's like your like, power coat. Yeah, like there's less. Isn't, isn't the, that the one you're talking about with the dogs? Like you put that little power coat on them. Oh, thunder vest. <laughs> thunder vest. Yes. You, uh, you you look more manly now. More? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's impossible. No. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Wow. You're an asshole. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hey, you know what? You know what I thought. Uh, I thought about when I was looking at analytics with my uh, my uncle over this last weekend. Looking at the anals, yeah, analytics, and, yeah. And you know something that we're we're gonna have to find a clever way to do this because, and I feel Can we like just call him that from now on the anals. When we talked to Sean, remember him saying that this he's been I don't know at least the fifth or sixth person that's been like an interviewer or a big a big person that has told me that uh, they were really turned off by the show when they first listened to us. Oh, know? why? And then they still... Because of the because of the bro talk at the beginning, because... What? Yeah, remember he said Analytics. that. Analytics. So, what are you talking about? So, <laughs> don't do that. This is what got me thinking. I thought, okay, well... We Maybe gotta, we should open the show no, no, with no, no. fitness and then end. No, with, no, 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 no. That's oh, okay. not. I don't, I don't think there's right, nothing sorry. about change the don't, formula. All how I dare you change. Yeah, us. we're not going to get. Sorry, I'm sorry. And Mr. fuck Mr. that. Corporate. We have a zero fucks personality, oh, so there's no way we would do that. But yeah, what, let's get more what we what we can do though it, that I don't think would take very much is either one take sound bites from the 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 clips that were when we were answering questions like small little like pieces and play, that. and play little bits of that in the front whether it's right after right mm. before the intro so if yeah but then so, people might get fooled no no so this is this is how you would do that man this when uh you walk right into Doug, this thing has been a pain in the ass man it goes in and out you. like crazy i remember when brett it first started happening to brett Oh, you're talking about your headphones yeah it goes in and it goes in and out a lot i'm okay right now but if you play like if it gets Move, like it touch, I touch it. It's very sensitive. So I don't know which one. <laughs> don't touch it then. Yeah. But anyway, so, so what do you what do you think of that? Or you give like we give an over uh, overview after the after it, and then we can so like right after we do the uh, episode because sometimes we have no fucking clue what we're. Gonna You're talk about. about to hear us talk about intro. You want to do an intro to our shows now? Well, kind of. And this is why because uh, I don't think it's. Broken. I've gotten this is I've gotten a lot of feedback of this, and the only reason why I bring it up is because my uncle brought it up, and. And I, you know, I, w- I haven't thought from that perspective in, a, in quite some time. And it's and the, he brings a good point because it used to be what we tell people is go back and listen to the first episode. But in reality, most people aren't going to be able to do that. It's 500 something episodes. At one point, 
I don't care if everybody tells you, oh, you should listen to episode one and go all the way through because they tell kind of a story. Most motherfuckers don't have that, that kind of time, and, but they are, they're they convinced because a good friend told them to come by and take a so listen to these like guys. just like one like, yeah, incredible but, knowledge bomb here's we, the thing. we each said. So, then, something like that. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know or if I want to mess with the or formula. Maybe, or, no, no, no. At or, the end, or, at, maybe, or maybe Doug plays with the intro somehow where he takes little pieces from like, some some really good episodes, some of our most viral episodes, mm. where you know you made like a really good point. It's just a quick little soundbite from something we've already done, yeah, and that's played in inside the intro. I don't know because at the same time, these same people who said, "Ah, I couldn't," you know, the first you time still I listened, won them over, they so, still ended up listening. So this is and, I, and, I thought the same way and too. It's very, and that's, that's, it, that's our ego. Yeah, bro. no, maybe not because sure it is because it's working. I don't I don't see what. what the, no, 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 no. You, you heard from three you, people. No. That's not true. How many? Five? It's, no, it's been way more than that. Over the last two years? Nah. Oh, absolutely. I don't know because I think or Am I the only one that's... Doug, have you heard that? No, what? I have heard that. Okay. Yeah, but I so think, I've, uh, I've heard that too. And you got to think. Somebody's going to come in. Mm. Think for like you. Now, actually, be you, okay? With, and you just dropped into a podcast. How many people okay. have this podcast? Can you name one podcast you've listened to the very beginning episodes all the way through? I know the answer already, so don't even have to answer. Yeah. It's no. So what makes you think... That and now think like that person who's never came in and listened. You searched on Google and found us, and found Mind Pump because we have so much information on the web now, or YouTube, and then you hop over here. And the first fifteen minutes, all you hear is us talking about dicks and vaginas, which is fine because that's funny yeah. and that's locker room talk. That's not talk. what we talk about. No, no, no. But you, let's say it is. But Just let's say them. it's that episode they drop in on. Right? It's one of it's one of five that we might talk like that. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of when when we did that cross promotion with uh, Art of Charm. <laughs> yes, oh that's a per- that's a perfect example. Well, that was our bad. So we did, I, yeah, okay. We did a cross promotion with Art of Charm, and he's like, "Hey, which episodes should we talk about or whatever?" And we're like, oh, "I don't know. Let's go through and yeah, look at. Our, let's give you the worst ones. Let's look no, at our, we, our we, highest downloads. Yeah, well, exactly. What we did was we just picked the ones that we saw the highest downloads, and, that it, made, and it that just made happened to have this intro that was just. Yeah. What were we talking about in that intro? <sighs> It was, oh, uh, Stan's Trench. Stan's Trench. Yeah. yeah. And anyway, Great needless topic. to say, he got some hate mail because yeah. people were like, "What the fuck did you?" So that that you? just that's proving my point on why I don't think it's that much of an extra mile for us to take. Uh, you know, fine. I mean, maybe of course we send one one of the assistants on on this to go after looking for the top downloads, so they can search that, they can figure that out, then they can listen through the episode, pick some of the some of the clips that were impactful for them. Because they were consumers at one point of ours anyway, so it's perfect for them to do this. And then we take those and we put together this short... And if you're somebody who listens every time, you can fast forward right through it to the beginning. You don't give a shit. Like, I don't listen to everybody's intro. Like, I've heard Fighter yeah. and the Kid a million it times. It reminds like, me of, like, when you listen to your favorite band and they have, like, this fucking awesome album that's divisive. Like, only some people like it, you know? And then they're trying to go back and, like, make it more popular and, like, you know, make everybody like it right from the beginning. And they end up and sucking just, more. They suck. The, pro- the problem... I'm just trying to think. I know, but it, it, I, know I know what you're talking well, about, this but is, be careful I'm a, I was on your guys' side for 500 episodes, okay? I've been on your side for 500 episodes with this, but I think this is something that we have to discuss because where we're at right now in the business, there's many, many people... Are, we now are old, like, first... You know, hundred episodes are nowhere near the downloads. Yeah, I hear what, I hear what you're are. saying. What it's you're saying is close. you want to have the intro and then have a bunch of clips from old episodes or whatever past episodes, and then it goes into the show. That lengthens the intro. I, okay, I've had way more people tell me they like our intro because it it's a short one and then it goes right into a conversation. Of course, because you're a you're a consumer and a listener. That's but you're not. You're, that's not who I'm concerned about. Those people, if they don't like it, they're just going to fast forward. Who gives a shit? Like really, you're going to get mad at me at who I'm. We're trying to build. We have a, to be careful not to change the branding, like the brand uh, of the show. Doug, is, I like to hear the producer's the thoughts on the, where my where I'm thinking right now. I do think we're losing some people at the get go because of the talk. And not everybody's going to be those type of people who listen to that. And then they say, oh, yeah, I kind of worked through that section. I didn't really like that much. And I got to the meat of it. And now I like your show. Not everybody's going to do that. So the question is, how many people are we losing? Exactly. That's my question. We don't know. Well, we don't know those either. Is, are coming back. And, and, and we also us. don't know how many people stay or like that. And that's what our, that's part of our flavor. It is. You're not changing that flavor, Sal. All I'm trying to do... So, length, I, and I'm just I'm not, trying to add a little I'm not even something. saying this long. Let's pretend we put... 
three minutes, which we wouldn't even need nowhere near that, three minutes of dialogue purely from it. And if you're a regular listener, you know the first, just like Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan, first eight minutes. I haven't listened to his first eight minutes of his show in like two years because I know it's all commercials. And I respect him that he has to do that because that's part of the job of what we do. You're advertising money. You have to put it in there. So that makes sense. And I, I, that's not going to stop me from listening to him, but it does give you a heads up if you want to know that stuff. Same thing will go for this. If you're the first time you've never turned this show on, you're giving me so a little So you turn bit. it on and there's clips, like little sound bites. Yes. Or we put it within the, the over over the mic well, right the sound, after the mic. The sound bites will, will will need to reflect the show. This is where I, not just information. It's also gonna have that other stuff. Sure, it comedy too. Yeah. Absolutely. I wouldn't want it to be I wouldn't want it to be a false uh, what I'm trying to do is Or maybe we put a warning. Warning. Mm. The, yeah, the episode yeah. begins like this. No, that's yeah. no. I don't yeah. like that. No, I, I'm, I'm being sarcastic. Yeah, and I think, and I think, Doug, I, I trust Doug to probably know or make the best call on this, and especially if he's been thinking about it already. It's been on my mind since since my uncle and I talked about this, and I was sharing that. And he and I like talking to someone who's never listened to the show, and they're just now coming in. They're trying to figure this whole business out. And that's their honest perspective. Like, hey, when you first come in, I, I may never stick past beyond that. We're we're talking about all these people that are already fans. You're so concerned about adding a minute or two of something that they're going to fast forward anyways. And for them to be mad at us for that, that's kind of unfair because we, we have to grow this. I mean, that's the only way well, we I mean, survive. I'm mad at it. I'm just don't want it to sound not like us. I mean, it, it's our voice. It's like, our voice. Like, it's yeah, fucking yeah, our, you're, it's clips of us talking. Yeah, yeah. That was not us. <laughs> All you're talking about is a, it's a canned intro. It's a, no, it's a produced intro that you're going to add to the, you know, welcome to mind pump. Yeah. Intro. Yeah. So it's we a little more it. digestible is what you're going for. And it's not that it's really digestible. It's just letting people know that there's something intelligent that's probably going to get said in this yeah. podcast. <laughs> just in case. They, <laughs> no, yeah, really. They don't get to it. Really. Yeah. Like if, I, if I'm searching the web. I, I know what you're okay, talking You're not about. in podcast world. You're not on YouTube. You're, you just happen to be fucking Google searching something and one of our blogs pops up or videos from you, whatever pops up. You click over, you start to listen to the podcast and that's all your first impression was right there. Not a referral from a friend or else. When we hit the web like that, especially since we're hiring a company right now that's going to be driving us out and there's going to be tons more people that have never heard of us or weren't referred by somebody that just happened to drop in one time. I want them to kind of know, I want to find a clever way that we can still be ourselves, not change anything that we fucking do, but also be able to let them- So it's just a condensed version of what a show sounds like in small clip. Yeah. Sure. You just be like, well, let's listen stay to it. tuned, you know. Yeah. We, yeah. Let's listen to we it. We do get smart sometimes. Yes. I think this is something we put together. I, don't know, I kind of like it that the pussies don't listen to us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That they listen to the first it's five. It's like ah. a, it's a filter. Yeah. Yeah, that's for, a very- I want to reach yeah. more Fuck people. Fuck you guys. Yeah, I'm with Doug. I want to reach more all right, people. All right, all right. So, all right. I, you know- If we like, wanted to do that, we wouldn't swear. It's my preference. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that's we wouldn't swear. No, that's not fucking true. That's not true. A lot of it is true. No, that's not- Because if you- I mean, we talk about this with like- you know, certain groups of people, there's going to be people that are offended, you know, regardless. And I, I get reaching a bigger amount of people, but there's always going to be people that are offended. You well, just you, you know, want people to no. know that it's a fitness. It's going to be I, fitness. Exactly. Too. Exactly. Yeah. That's all yeah. I want. Cause you, I get what you're coming with. Cause that. there's, there's times we go yeah. 15, 20 minutes like we are right now. And you you don't get anything you don't get to hear anything that's related to fitness and you're it's a fucking fitness podcast that's what you're coming here because you found some great article that we wrote yeah. and then I come in I gotta hear I hear you talk about dicks and vaginas for well, fifteen minutes. We don't have minutes. to be a fitness podcast completely though. That, well, I think that's the, we're the, not. We're, but yeah, we, but that's we what are. I mean, but but that's yeah. But see now you're you're completely having to to, to tunnel vision it. You know, it's it, not though. You're not. You're well, not, change, you're not do, changing anything. I don't, think it, I don't think it's a problem if we make one and hear it. And see yeah. what see what it sounds like. I, I, like I, I'm all for trying it. I'm just, you know, I, I put a cautionary like warning on there because like when once we start listening to the marketers and we listen to everybody and their ideas, it, it starts to convolute. You're not listening to the marketers. This is not us listening. What it is is recognizing what it may be the experience on the consumer. Put your take your fucking egos out of this. Step out. Look like a 75 year old woman who just came across. The well, I don't think she's gonna listen to our show. Well, whatever. Okay, 25 year old. Uh, yeah, I was gonna 25 say, year old. You kid. can intro the f however you want. Yeah, <laughs> 20, like, turn it off. 25 year old kid who's just coming in. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah, hit her wheelhouse. Phonograph. <laughs> 
<laughs> and we're, we are, we're gonna, this makes me moist. We're not going to lose those those peace. people that would be attracted to that side. I have I have plenty of people that I know that don't they hate to listen to the fitness side of it because they just like to hear our yeah that's talk fine. About, I, I we'll make let's make one and hear. I, know. It. I just make don't, one I just don't give it. a shit about you know people that don't like us right away. I don't yeah. care about them. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's just because that's <laughs> this is us. Just, you know, like fuck them. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Justin. That's you being sick talking I love right, Justin now. right now. It's you being sick yeah, talking he's, right he's now. You a can, gangster. Yeah, I don't you're fucking care. It's just not. It's not thinking. It's not thinking intelligently from a business perspective. Well, we'll see. It's, let's and, and, let's and, do and it maybe. and listen to it. Let's yeah, do it and maybe. listen to it. Because it's not. It, no, for sure. There's no maybe about it, bro. This isn't like a maybe. It's is maybe it's not. There's a hundred percent. Whether and if that's one person. That didn't have to go through that that pain of having to be told a second time. Listen, if it doesn't cha- listen if it, it doesn't change the feel of the show, I don't care. How could it? Well, uh, it's only on, only on Doug's end. Doug has to go produce it and put it in there. Let's yeah. listen. He's to the it. one I'm most concerned about because he's got to do the goddamn work. Yeah, I think you're trying to sell it so hard now that it's like you're making us like disagree now because you're so hard. Exactly. Hard. Let's just I'm listen to it. Yeah. That's what's hilarious. I mean, I don't yeah. think anybody's really disagreeing. Let's just I listen said, to like, it. I try it, but like I'm skeptical about God it is damn. what I'm saying. ABC, Adam. Yeah. Fucking it's yeah. done. Yeah. We'll listen to it and we'll no see what shit. happens. Yeah. Holy shit. He's like, no. Yeah. Fully agree. No. Yeah. You must commit now. This is 100% going to work. Fuck not everyone. not even tried it yet. Well, this is <laughs> yeah. bit, why I'm trying to get you to 100% commit is because one of the- Did one you make the, one already? One of the- No, I haven't. Oh, okay. no, you I must have. have. <laughs> because because I, know this, I know this requires work from Doug. Okay, yeah. this isn't any more work for one of us three. This is going to require work from Doug and maybe Ann. Like they well, I think he's sold too. I don't. I mean, let's let's do it and listen to but that's it. That's what I'm saying. He's. Not, I know Doug. Doug doesn't pull the trigger till he gets confirmation from all three of us. And I, what I don't want it to do is to go by as another thing that's kind of by the side that we need to get to. Yeah. I think this is something, where, especially with what we have. What's being built right now on as far as funnels and Facebook and getting onto social media? Well, platform, we are about to get an influx of. Definitely first time dropper dropping in and not not referrals more than I think we ever have. I think it would be smart that we move on this sooner than later. That's all. That's I'm not trying to close you guys that it's a bad or good idea. I'm saying I'd like to hear you guys confirm it, it so Doug will do it. Well, I think we should hear it. I think we should definitely hear it. I think if it doesn't change this, this the the feel of the show, I mean, at first the way you were explaining it, I think it was I, I wasn't understanding it. But if it's an intro, the intro stays the same, and then you've got some clips Dude, of I'm us seeing, from I'm different shows. Already said, yeah, yeah. yeah I think I, we've dude, already I'm said. I'm so it. open Whatever. on how we do it. I'm just yeah. trying to get my point across on like why we're doing <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, I think a small, a very short, like clips of uh, of quotes and stuff that we've said that give people a little synopsis, so they know what to expect. That there's going to be some vulgarity, some comedy. There's going to be some fitness information. There's going to be some, you know, whatever, you know, motivational stuff. Yeah, you know, so it's like you've kind of hit all those. And you're like, okay you know that this episode is going to be... Now, a lot of shows actually have clips of the actual show. Like, I think Ben does this. I think mm-hmm. Greenfield does this. Like, in this episode. Yeah, he does it. yeah, You know, and he's got clips. I like that a lot for interviews. Interviews is cool. For really interviews, cool, I really yeah. like that. Yeah. But It makes but, you more interested in, yeah, in the whole thing. Yeah, but I think something that kind of gives people a short, like... This is what the show. This is what kind of what the show sounds like, and like, yeah. you know, a thirty second little thing or whatever. Yeah. yeah, I don't see why not. Let's let's give it a shot and listen to it. If it doesn't change the feel, cool. Yeah, sounds great. <laughs> bring bring on the PC bird. Yes, indeed. is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. Our first question is from Quah. Batchman19. <laughs> yeah. Will working on muscle endurance help you in the long run with your compound lifts? Muscle endurance. So they're talking about strength endurance here, not necessarily cardiovascular endurance. What's the difference between the two? So uh, they're both intricately tied. So working on muscle endurance will improve your cardiovascular and vice versa. But you can have great cardiovascular endurance. Let's say you're a runner. So you've got great you know, VO2 max. Your, your lung capacity is good. You utilize oxygen when you're training aerobically very well. But then you go to do you know a set of 25 reps on a barbell squat, and because you don't have the strength mm-hmm. to support yourself, you just die, especially within those deep ranges of motion. So uh, muscle or strength endurance is what I just described, that 20, 30, 40 reps of 
being able to, it's almost like a combination between, you know, strength and cardiovascular endurance. And uh, will it benefit your compound lifts? Definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in our in Maps Anabolic, for example, which is the foundational program, you the phases range between you know one to four or five reps to uh, you know over twenty reps, um, depending on what phase you're in. And each one of those contributes to uh, building muscle stability, overall performance. But they actually also contribute to each other. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> So you'll notice if you've been training in a strength phase for a very long period of time and you're doing lots of heavy, you know, three rep sets of whatever exercise, and then you go do higher reps uh, for a little while, when you go back to training for, and I say a little while, because if you stay in that high rep range for too long, you'll actually lose strength because you start to adapt to, you know, fully in one direction. Well, it's an important adaptation, you know, to be able to go through that. You want to be able to have stamina. You know, and and to be able to control yourself under fatigue, and so you know, the only way to do that is to go through these phases of of you know volume and, mm-hmm. and going through all those reps, and um, you know, and, it, and it's also good to do that too for just reinforcing uh, like practice, like going through these compound lifts. So like you get more more reps equals more training. You know, the mind and the, and the connection to that particular movement as well. Now I noticed for I've, myself, I was going to say when I do heavy squats, if I do lots of heavy sets of two, three reps, two, three reps, whatever. If I go and then do like a week or two of, or even three weeks of, fifteen rep squats, and I have to drop way down on the weight, I notice uh, I get a little more hypertrophy in my legs. Then I go back to my heavy sets, and I'm stronger. So they all they all communicate. I, I wonder. I wonder if he wanted more like uh, cardio endurance, and if that will help you in the long run with compound lifts. Maybe muscle endurance wasn't where he was because I feel like that's so. You think he's talking about just like, like cardio. cardiovascular endurance? Yeah. So I, I feel like that because that question I get asked a lot when because they're so um, opposite, and people have said like it's going to benefit that. Where like muscle endurance and and compound lifts, that's kind of a no brainer. That would be that's going to carry over and benefit that. Where well, let's talk about that then. Let's yeah, talk about cardio. I used to tell this is how I, I explain this. Like when someone would try to ask a question like this, I feel like what he's trying to ask is like when you do cardio, we're, it's a muscle just like anything else, and you're going to strengthen that muscle, and that muscle is responsible for pumping blood to all them muscles. And when you go to do squats, those are big muscles, especially when you're doing compound lifts, and you're, you're, those muscles are going to want blood at a faster rate and more demand. So strengthening the heart is only going to help that process ha- happen a lot faster and easier on you. So training that really carries over into doing lifts like a compound lift that demands a lot of blood. Well, I don't know about you guys, but if I go do a set of, you know, 20 reps in the barbell squat, what's going to limit me is my cardio. It's not my muscle endurance even. My muscles, in fact, mm, yeah. could keep going, but I get fucking exhausted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in my, I get winded. And that's always and that's a good example yeah. of that you could benefit from that. So, And Definitely. I'm sure we could all agree on that. I mean, and I've been trying to train that way right now where I'm doing a lot of, heavy, a lot of high, high uh, reps and supersets to try and build that. Same here. I've been yeah. doing more circuits and like track work and – uh, I did a kettlebell circuit the other day, and, yeah. I, and today so, I did. So this sets. is a, this is actually a little this complexes. is a good little branch topic. Is that uh, something that uh, I know we all kind of do, but we don't really share this? Um, is when you get, I'll, I'll notice that, right? I'll notice that I try and do something that's you know cardiovascular tra- uh, challenging for myself. And if I have a hard time with it, like that's kind of my indicator. Like I've been staying in that five to six Mm -hmm. or low rep range for a while. And then now I'll start. And some of the ways I start to do that is I'll just start picking up, you know, getting into the 12, 15 rep range. And then I'll start adding supersets and then I'll slowly start increasing volume. And then you'll see me do like more like body weight stuff or aerobic type movements to kind of pick my heart rate up. So I'll just kind of naturally do that into my routines. I don't know if you guys do the same way or that's how you, but that's kind of when I notice that as soon as I notice it, then I start going that other direction. Well, I'll tell yeah. you what, uh, something I noticed a long time ago. So for, first off, I obviously I started working out lifting weights cause I wanted to build muscle. And I thought doing cardio was the opposite of building muscle. Like why would I want to burn any calories? Right. I want to conserve calories. because I'm trying to gain weight. And about, I don't know, it might have been maybe 10 years ago or so, I started incorporating cardiovascular training a little more regularly into my uh, workouts. Now, I didn't overdo it. I want, to be, I want to be clear here. You could definitely overdo cardio and you will lose muscle strength and size as your body tries to adapt to become more efficient at 
you know, long steady state type cardio, you will lose muscle. But if I, if you do a little bit enough to improve your health, I noticed, and I noticed with my clients too, I built more muscle. Um, and it only makes sense if I'm not doing any cardio at all. Yeah. That part of my body You're not stimulating it at all. Well, I'm not optimally. Uh, my health isn't optimal. Yeah. I don't have optimal health mm. because it is a part of being healthy overall. Will improving your overall health improve your ability to adapt to strength training? Of course, absolutely. Just like you know, why eating more vegetables sometimes will make you build more muscle. It's not because necessarily you've got like you know, mm-hmm. you know, macronutrients your muscles necessarily need, but it could be the extra nutrients that you're eating and your overall health right. improves. So, cardiovascular training I think should be a part of everybody's workouts. I just don't think you need to be extreme with it. No, but you should do some form of walking, hiking, or well, and biking I think, or whatever. Think of the people that need it the most. The people that need it the most that ten, are the ones that tend to train in the like power lifting phase most of the time. If you're yeah. somebody who yeah. Like, uh, like works out like Craig works out all the time. Like he doesn't really need a lot of outside cardio than that. Like, cause he does. Oh no, he's 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 getting some cardio. Yeah, with his lifts. Yeah, he's jumping rope in between a exactly. lot of time. He's doing a lot. Of, he's doing a lot of uh, plyometrics in between. In like, fact, that's the kind of cardio. So, what you ideal and ideal routine would include some type of high intensity cardio for a short period of time. And of course, this is taking into account that you have good exercise programming. That you're well rested and all that stuff. So right? I'll tell you how I, you want to know how I used to tell athletes like getting ready for a show, right? Uh, how how I'd introduce cardio. So they would start with nothing, right? So you don't get any cardio at the beginning. And I want to figure your body out what we can do calorie wise, so I can see that it can be on a nice gradual drop. Once we kind of figure out where that maintenance level is, then I entered the very first bit of cardio I introduced is actually 12 to 15 minutes of hit post workout. And the, the idea of that is like when you're when you're resistance training, they say you utilize about 80 to 85% of your glycogen stores. Mm-hmm. That's totally different for everybody, and that's not an pr- approximate number. But we use most but not all of your storage. So hitting doing that hit afterwards kind of empties that completely for yourself, so it speeds up that process for your body to start kicking over to metabolize fat as its primary source because you're tapped out. So you would do that, and I would do that only three times a week, and then I'd slowly build on build on that every every week. We'd add just a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. just to maintain, like you're talking about high intensity, like versions of cardio too, just to maintain the abilities. You know, I feel yes, uh, I lose abilities if I'm not ever incorporating it in my training anymore. Um, where I want to keep some of those things, I want to be able to sprint, you know, every now and then, and and be able to <clears throat> throw something in. And, and move in a in a particularly high intensive way, you know, I, I need to maintain that. So I have to make sure to really if I haven't had that in my programming for a long time, I definitely throw that. That's back a good in. point because if you value that, I mean if you value being able to move uh, fluidly, be able to have some, you mm-hmm. know, explosive endurance, also have some good strength and have some, you know, long endurance, you might you want, might want to incorporate all of it. I, mean, I like to my ideal situation is I'm doing my resistance training and I've got my you know my my weight training type programming and then I'll throw in days of high intensity short type workouts whether it's a circuit or you know something with the sled or a jump rope mm-hmm. and then uh whenever I have time and this is sometimes two days a week sometimes it's four days a week I love to go outside and go for a walk and luckily we live in, in a place like California where we can do that all the time but yeah. That kind of meditative cardio for me, I don't necessarily do it to burn calories. Yeah. I do it because yeah. it's meditative. I get like really good thinking. If I go with my girlfriend, we have phenomenal conversation. Or it's also to just well, go I think outside. Why we preach that the most is because it's the most beneficial, you know, for and, longevity. For yeah, sure. for longevity. Even though you know, there's there's a place for hit type cardio and all that. Like that that should make up the bulk of where I'm getting my cardiovascular training from. Yeah, I agree. Melly Wolf asks, what's your take on eating for your blood type? Is it relevant enough to use as a guide or is it the horoscope of diets? Now, she's the one. <laughs> wow. she, she, You guys did some stuff with her, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to – I don't think this will be – or I don't think her videos will be done in time for that. Uh, for for the, this. While this is up? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Cool. So we'll direct people. She's a fitness – She squats, in, man. Yeah, she's a fitness legit. enthusiast with uh, – um, I think she's going to school for physical therapy. Mm-hmm. Didn't you guys say that? Yep. yep. Yeah. So blood type diets, uh, interesting premise. Um, now, for those of you who are not familiar, I actually pulled up because I forgot exactly what the different blood types were supposed to eat according to this diet. So I pulled it up here and I'll read it. I'm reading it off uh, off their site. So people with type A bloods, uh, blood types, they call the agrarians or cultivators. They should eat a diet rich in plants 
and completely free of quote unquote toxic red meat. So this resembles a veg- vegetarian. Then there's type B blood types, uh, which are called the nomads. These people can eat plants and most meats except for chicken and pork, and they can also eat some dairy. They should avoid wheat, corn, lentils, tomatoes, and a few other foods. Then there's type AB, which is called the enigma. This is a mix between A and B, and they get to eat uh, seafood, tofu, dairy, beans, and grains, and they should avoid things like kidney beans, corn, beef, and chicken. And then type O, that's me, is called the hunter. This is a high-protein diet based largely on meat, fish, poultry, certain fruits and vegetables, but limited in grains, legumes, and dairy. It resembles the paleo diet. So the reasoning behind this is that we've known for a while now that uh, like type O, for example, is called the original blood type. It's the blood type all humans had at one point. And the other blood types uh, came about uh, later on through evolution. And what they're connecting is, for example, type A or whatever, you know, it, it, it popped up in Northern Europe around this time. And around that time, you know, they were cultivating dairy. Therefore, this person can have dairy. And I don't know if that's exactly what it is. I'm just kind of making it up, but that's what it sounds like, right? And since type O is the original, you know, diet or whatever, they should eat more like a hunter-gatherer. And so this is the... This, this is kind of the, the, the logic that they try to apply to this nutrition. The problem is, is there's very little uh, to no science supporting this. Now, they, of course, have connected blood types to, for example, type O, lower risk of heart disease, but higher risk of stomach ulcers. And they've loosely shown some correlations between blood types and uh, sort of the microbiomes. What are compatible ones like, that you can... Like, is it just type O? I think type O is the one, the universal, mm-hmm. uh, but they can only get type O. So everybody can get type O, but type O can only have type okay. O. Okay. Right, the right. other ones I believe have to be specific or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I mean, very little science supporting this. Now, here's the, here's the take. If you're a person eating a typical American diet and then you buy this book and then you read it and you say, oh, I'm going to, you know, going to eat like a vegetarian because that's my blood type or I'm going to eat like a hunter-gatherer. You're going to benefit my... really nice. You're going to benefit all of them yeah. probably because you eliminated processed shitty foods. None of the blood types does he recommend eating lots of, you know, soft drinks and sugars and, you know, other types of things. Pretty much it's all the meats that they recommend regardless of what blood type you're in. Is... That's type 1 diabetes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. They recommend like, you know, eating these, you know, well-sourced meats and whatever so that's the tough part, right? I'd like to see a study that really breaks down specifically what's happening here. The pro- my problem is there's so many more variables. There's so many, so many variables. Like I was just listening to a podcast with Rob Wolf. I think it was, uh, I think Ben Greenfield interviewed him. And uh, Rob Wolf has a book now called uh, Wired to Eat, which I'm in the middle of reading. Uh, we should put that in the show notes. Yeah. Uh, and so far, so good. It's excellent. And in the book, he makes some very interesting um comparisons to uh, how highly palatable foods are affecting our brain chemistry. And now Mm. when you eat natural foods, they just taste bland. And he shows how like uh, porn addiction works in the same way. It's really interesting. Some really interesting stuff that they show in the book. But in there, he talks about these studies that are massive that they're doing where people have these continuous glucose monitors on. And what a continuous glucose monitor does is it tells you every minute a person's blood sugar levels. Okay, so every single minute you can see, and there's tons of data. I think there was like 800 participants, and there's like, you know, every single minute for I don't know how many weeks they tested their, their blood glucose and they had to eat different foods. And it was crazy just how individual people's uh, their variance was. Yeah. Oh my God. Like, well, we saw well, this that, is what Euron was talking about. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, we saw this. When, we watched him when yeah. he, we, we saw that firsthand. He must have done, I don't remember how many thousands of case studies he mm-hmm. had. And he showed us on a graph. I was floored. Yeah, like because, basic foods. Too. Well, yeah, exactly. It was like rice. He'd go rice. Here's somebody who is on the the glycemic index. It was to the floor, and then someone would be to the ceiling. I mean, it was that much. Yeah. Of Dude, a they had that. they had people in this study who, yeah. for example, would eat a banana, and they'd get like a normal sugar, you know, uh, load or whatever. Their, their uh, the test would show that they're just you know very healthy. Mm-hmm. Then they'd eat a cookie, and they'd get a big spike. And you'd be like, well, that's expected, right? Yeah, yeah. That and then there obvious. were people who were the opposite. Yeah. They would eat a cookie, no shit, <laughs> and their blood glucose would barely spike. They'd eat a banana to go through the roof. Then they would have people who would eat like you know white rice, for example, and they'd have them eat it with a fat. Like, okay, if we throw some avocado and some meat in there, that should blunt 
your your blood sugar, right? Mm. Which is Instead, super super fascinating to me because that just shows you like how how off we probably are well, so much. Dude. Well, some people would eat shit that you would think like it would be a fat or something, or you know, like I, like I said, they would add a fat to rice or whatever. And th- at first, their blood sugar response to, sh- to rice was normal. Then they'd add a fat to it and it fucking go through the roof. Yeah. And and so one of the theories is is there may be some kind of an immu- uh, immune response where this person may be intolerant to a particular mm. food. Cortisol rises. Cortisol tells the liver pump out, you know, glycogen and and, Which and sugar spikes. I don't care spikes. who the fuck you are. Everybody has a food or a kind of food that they've eaten before, and they just feel like always agrees with them, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, everybody does. I don't yeah. care who you are, and yeah. it's probably different for all of us because I've met lots of people that that would answer that differently. But everyone has like a food yeah. or a food well, group they well, can like, hang out in, right? <laughs> well, like me, I'll eat certain starches, and I swear to God, within 30, 40 minutes, I want I have to take a nap. Like it fucking makes me. And I know it's because. I'm getting a bad response, but my point with all this is there's so many different variables, and I think blood type is this huge, this this huge category within that within, within a, you know millions of people with type O. There's going to be different you know micro microbiomes, different mm-hmm. genetics, different epigenetics, different possible so food you're saying intolerances. That is still too pretty generic to base it off of just your blood type. I totally no yeah. completely I, totally right. I, I, but it still ha- here's what I I mean. Like I think you, there's some fascinating. I mean, there's yeah, some exactly. fascinating I, stuff with yeah, it. Yeah, I think right. I, exactly. I think you. Uh, wh- what I think is you can't go wrong following it. Like the, the diet they recommend, I don't care who you are, what you're currently It's eating. probably better than what you're eating. It's probably eating a lot shit, better, yeah. actually. I mean, what you were just listing off is the examples of what they would be, the food choices. I mean, you're they're pretty healthy, right? Mm-hmm. Especially if you follow them right. So, yeah, I think that you can't go wrong. But I think um, worrying about it too much, like or focusing on it, like it's a big deal. There's much bigger rocks that most people for, for the time being should be focusing on. I think on, right? we've been trying to make connections like this for a while, like big connections like, you know... Oh, your skin color is this, therefore this, or your ancestors come from here, so you should eat this, or, and even that, even where your ancestors come from, y- y- theoretically will make sense, right? If you know your ancestors are Mediterranean, then they probably will do better with foods that were in that area, type of thing. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it's way too many variables, uh, you know, to account for that kind of stuff. It's just, it's just too broad. I think. The Cause bottom because you're, you're right. There's got to be ma- there's got to be multiple generations that came from Mediterranean that have mm. type O and also came from yeah, and desert if, and were type O. Right? I don't know, man. I think and, you know, like I was saying, I think the the, the rules are the same, right? Uh, eat whole natural foods, mm. listen to your body, don't overeat, and just kind of start right there. I think if everybody just kind of did that, they'd feel amazing. And like when we were talking to, I forgot who else we were talking to about this, and they were, or maybe it was another podcast I was listening to where. About eighty percent of st- of people who get tested just do better with a paleo type diet. That mm-hmm. just that's just what the statistic. But there's twenty percent that do worse. Mm-hmm. That need a diet that's higher in carbohydrates. But none of those diets are you know bad in the sense that they're not heavily processed foods and lots of all these chemical type of things in them. All of them are based on these kind of natural quote unquote type you know what you would call healthy diets. And I, I know I'm going to irritate a lot of uh, certain people out there who say there is no. Good and bad food, but that seems to be the yeah. the, the the general consensus with these studies. So it's so, so. Anno- it's so <laughs> I get so annoyed by that camp yeah. that has to be like that. That's there's no yeah. such thing as good and bad food. It's like because of the because of demonizing food, and so there's that. It's once again, I know we went to one extreme, right? Demonizing fat, demonizing th- things that we shouldn't have been. So there's this was the counter to that, and then now it's way. Well, dude, I don't want to. I mean, not to go too there's off. There's no topic, winners and losers. But but, <laughs> che- but check this out. Just because I talked it's the same about group. It, yeah. this was in yeah, Wired same D. People. This was in Wired D. So I'm going to talk about it because it's, it's really cool, right? So when when uh, our brains and he uses porn as an example to to demonstrate this. Our brains are designed to uh, desire things like novelty. Of course, men are visually stimulated. And all these things evolved in a natural environment, okay, where you're exposed to a certain amount of females and those women are willing to do a certain amount of things or whatever. And that's what you're, you know, that's, that's, that's what we evolved seeing. Anal. So, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. so uh, introduce porn where you're clicking from tab to tab and you're going from shot to shot. You are introducing an environment that never would have existed throughout all of human evolution, and which is why now we're getting men in their 20s with erectile dysfunction, dysfunction and issues because their brains are becoming wired to respond to this insane situation which would never exist in, in nature. So then when they go to real life, it fucks with them to normal things no longer become 
you know, no longer stimulate them. And they've yeah. seen structural changes in the brain, actual structural changes in the brain as a result of this. Now, the same thing, the same exact uh, thing can be said with food. Mm-hmm. We have scientists and billions and billions of dollars that are geared towards engineering the most perfect palatable food that combines flavors and tastes and smells well, and novelty and the way they look yeah. uh, based upon you know uh, what we evolved to desire, but putting them all in a package that never would have existed. Like like you would never have these ridiculously palatable foods with these vibrant colors and smells and whatever mm-hmm. in nature. So your brain becomes conditioned to this to the point where you go eat normal food, you know, healthy, natural, whole foods, and they're not. They're, they're not as powerful. They're not yeah. palatable, yeah. and so it makes it very difficult. That's yeah. why broccoli to people is like, oh, that's gross. I tell you what, if you never ate all this crazy foods, broccoli's delicious. You'll find that after I'll, you do I'll it for tell a while. you right now that yeah. this was the part for me, and I was sharing this with you, Sal, uh, when we were discussing this. Was when I competed it for the first time in my life. Um, I mean, I was so dialed with what I was eating. And I know we were just talking about clean and clean and bad foods, but I had none of that shit. And I was always like ice cream, even as a trainer, my whole career, ice cream and candy were like regular things in my diet. And I just worked them off. IIFYM style, mm-hmm. you know? So that was like, so it was always in my diet and I was never really a big fruit and, and vegetable or a vegetable eater. That was definitely bad on that. Got my protein because I want to make sure I build my muscle, but was not getting, not getting that at all. When I went and competed and I got rid of all of that and I was eating all whole natural foods, it blew my mind and it took it it took a good 60 90 days of like hardcore dieting for me and then when all of a sudden i had like a strawberry or a blueberry for the first time it was amazing it was i first time in my life i desired fruit and now it's become a staple and i actually crave it i love it and i have i don't i mean i probably can count on one hand how many times i've had candy in the last yeah. like couple of years but i was like somebody who was like every day mm-hmm. yeah. in my life and it, and i and i know that now what that was from. I didn't realize that all that sugar that I was getting, all that, all that fake sh- processed sugar and shit that I was getting in my diet on a regular basis, it's, all the protein. You can tap into that kind of quickly going through 24, 48 hour fast. And just when you're reintroducing food, like when you've been just that restricted, uh, man, does it, it the, the flavors just like come at you like crazy. And it's just, yeah, we're just oversaturated and you, we're just flooding our body you, with all these crazy amounts of flavor. You have to understand most of the money that goes into uh, these foods, these processed foods, goes into the research on how to make them. And I mean, you're talking about lots of money and lots of time. Yeah. I mean, the engineering that goes into making something that comes out of a box and has a was shelf life. Was he talking life. about Pringles? Remember uh, Rob Wolf was bringing up the example. Uh, yeah, of I think it was talking, engineered. I, I mean, it's just it's yeah. insane. They're they're engineered this way to hit on all these things and nat- real whole natural foods have a tough time competing with this. And so you're and you're more likely to eat more of them because they're so palatable that they override a lot of the signals that we'll, we'll normally get. Like, how often do you overeat? You know, uh, like I said, like a bowl of vegetables or you know, things in the natural state, not as often no. as eating processed foods. It's very easy because it kind of it overrides those states. So. I, co- I connected that switch like, I don't know, year two or three as a trainer. And I remember just telling my clients, because I, I guess it was so hard for me to get them to follow like these exact diets. I finally just said, hey, you know what? You can eat all, if you eat chicken, steak, potato, like baked potato, things like that, everything. I let them have all that stuff. As long as you just ate whole foods, like I said, I dare you to try and eat too much. It's hard. If you mm-hmm. eat all whole natural foods and that, and you just keep filling up on that, it's pretty hard. It's to, much more difficult. To, it's hard to get to 10,000 plus yeah. calories. And you know, 10,000 calories can come on you real and, quick. And, and you know who understands some of the secrets of overeating are people who compete in eating competitions. People who compete in eating competitions have learned strategies to override the body's systems that tell you not to eat anymore, that you're full. A lot of us think it's just the- that yeah, What is that? CCK? What is that? It's really, you're, you're, it releases and then it basically will it'll actually make you kind of nauseous. Oh, I don't- There's a lot of different and chem- they used, they used hormones. To, they used to, and to put CCK that. in supplements. I don't know if they still do that. But oh, that, I remember that supplement. Yeah, it, it, that, that'll make you feel like uh, you're like you don't want to eat or whatever. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was a hormone. It wasn't that, a very effective one. Uh, I no, can't remember the name no, of it. No, it wasn't. But that's what they were trying to do. There's a signal that gets that gets sent from the brain, tells your body you're you're full. Yeah, one of us should look it up. I don't know, but uh, it's been a long time since I. But like that. there was there was one example again. Rob Wolf was telling us about this when we went to go see him. 
there's that uh, was it man versus food the ice cream challenge yeah and he yeah. had to do this ice cream channel challenge where he had to eat that, yeah. like an insane amount of ice cream and only two or three people in history have ever been able to do it and this guy's like obviously this guy that's what he does for a living he's really mm-hmm. good at it so he goes in and he's eating this ice cream and he gets like, like two thirds or something yeah. or halfway there and he just starts to gag like and get nauseous so what does he do now those of us who don't understand how the body systems of you know telling you that you're full or whatever work, we would think the worst thing you could do is eat something else. Eat like, more. Yeah, yeah, don't fill up your stomach with other food. You got to no, keep it. He got some salty food. Yeah. He got some salty French fries yeah. and started eating French fries, and then he was able to go back and eat the ice cream. Now, we've all – and this is, again, he's overriding these systems because he's introducing mm-hmm. different highly palatable – you know, uh, you know, sensations to the body, which then overrides the, the signal of being full, and then he was able to finish the ice cream by eating a whole thousand this, calories. This is of why French fries. why Wendy's French fries taste so fucking amazing in a chocolate frosty. Right? That's what people say. <laughs> I always saw people doing that. Oh, I never dude, got into oh that. my god, like, it's what? a it's a no brainer. Oh, yeah. It's a no brainer. But yeah, I mean, we've all noticed it. Dude, we've all uh, people know this, right? Well, you'll eat a huge dinner and be stuffed, and then dessert will come out, and for whatever reason, like I can't eat another piece of steak. Yeah. I'll throw up if I do. But I can have a piece of pie. Like, how is that even possible? So, anyway, I know we went off topic there, but I, th- no, I thought that's that was really, very that, fascinating. No, no, that's happened. really good information, and that is really fascinating yeah. when you think of it like that. That man ant. <laughs> For strengthening the shoulders and core, is the steel mace better or are the clubs better? That man ant. Yeah, Justin, those are your. Uh, those yeah, are those your, are my your people. Those are my fun tools. I would think the mace. That would be my guess. My quick answer. That, that's that's better for it. Yeah. Just because it, 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 I, you go a lot heavier. But I guess you could go well, huge here's, clubs, here, though, too. Here I, was my argument. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely merit to both. But um, my argument was more based off of, like, what I would start somebody with would be the clubs because uh-huh. it's more controllable. And, you know, the, the skill acquisition, like, there's a lot more moves that – um, don't require quite as much shoulder mobility initially. A mace swing is that's a good point. Oh, it's very like dependent for sure. More you da- have for good, sure more dangerous. Yes, yeah. more. Yeah, exactly. That's a good point. So, um, I think that's that's really what I would caution. Just getting into mace belt training is, you know, how how mobile are your shoulders first going into that because that. <laughs> I mean, it's it's the great sort of divide there. Like you'll you'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll know. know right away. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna fuck you up. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, w- w- what's nice about the clubs is that um, I mean, there's just lot, a lot of sort of precursor moves that you could do very simple like circles with, and you're gonna get a lot of benefit from. You're gonna like with Maps Prime, um, we have we have tests and we have a wall test to kind of identify you know, certain ways that there's restrictions in, in the shoulder and, um, you know, where to identify that. And I, I honestly feel like it's, it's a great transition from there to then venture into the clubs and then add resistance to that mobility. Um, and, and the clubs are a great source for that to get those circular, um, patterns, that rotation that the, the shoulder, if you think about what you do during the day, how often are you, you know, rotating your shoulders and moving them in a circular fashion and, um, getting your elbow and your wrists and everything to roll and and do all these things that are a natural <clears throat> human movement. Like we we are made to be able to do these things, but if we don't do them enough, that's where the problems arise, and, mm. and that's where we start to get these imbalances, which cause pain and cause. So when I'm doing something, all of a sudden now I'm getting pains in my elbow and I'm getting pains in my shoulder. Um, and most of the time it's because you've turned off that signal completely to, to muscles that, um, <clears throat> would be contributing in these types of rotational movements. So, um, I highly, highly suggest people look into Indian, Indian clubs and, um, steel clubs. Dude, and I feel the best swings. I've ever felt in my life right now. Uh, and using, cause I've been using Indian clubs and mace now for, it's been about a year. Are you programming them specifically like you do, or just a warm up? Um, you no, know, I, there's days where I'll come in and actually do all clubs and all mace. I've done a whole, a whole workout like that. I'll, I'll sporadically do that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I, I haven't structured it. Uh, I haven't even thought about structuring it, to be honest with you. I've just kind of gone with like, hey, I, I could do a really good- Yeah, I was mo- curious to see what that would look like. Yeah, so I, I sporadically do- I've full- always wanted to do like a rotational like sort of mod into performance and like how to incorporate mm. that more effectively. And so mm. maybe in the future. So like it w- I would probably do that t- today if I get more work in. And an example is just because I'm super, super tight. Like my back, I did really, I did hit deads, I hit squats, like everything's pretty, my posterior chain's like fried right now. So so I really want to just open that because I don't want to be closed up. And I know when I stop, if I allow if I allow myself to go train my deads or squats again before I do any of that, I, I'll tell I can have I have I'll have less mobility in my in my thoracic region. Mm. Like I can't get all the way back when I go to squat again if I'm still tight, and that opens me up really really nice. So I'll try and throw one in in the middle for sure. That's been in my first ten to fifteen minutes of priming though. I have like a little routine that I've mm-hmm. been doing to and my my squat and and my Oh man, I'm deep and comfy right now. And my, my hips and my knees, my back have felt so amazing. I haven't felt this good in a long time. Yeah, and then to to go off of that, like that's one of the reasons why I got into Indian clubs. Well, after Indian clubs, I was just curious at like unconventional training and I would explore more than anything. I would explore these other uh, options that are out there. And when I saw like what that did without really even diving into full mobility mode, like uh, just, just swinging around the Indian clubs and then going to overhead pressing. It was just like such a clear, uh, like a benefit that I got immediately from yeah. that. So, and it was, I paid attention to that. And also like, you know, I had you guys doing the overhead, you know, the loaded carried walks. Yeah, you know, that makes with, a huge difference. Kettle, it's just, you just all of a sudden you have all this the support system that's in place and your 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 muscles respond more appropriately and quickly. Yeah, you're you're definitely missing out if you're not uh, learning how to use these and incorporating them in some way, even if it's just a little bit, because mm-hmm. it is a movement that there there is no barbell or dumbbell movement that mimics uh, what you do with these two. You know, listen devices. listen to you say, uh, share those right now. We should do like a YouTube series where we. Uh, give like some there's I have a handful like moves that are like staple that have just I when I know when I'm keeping those in there Mm -hmm. it just it makes me feel so much better and the overhead carries are one of those Mm -hmm. Um, that's since you've got me doing that like that's a that's a major one and then I have a, a seated like when I'm down in the seated position of a reverse fly that it's been a game changer for me and then my 90-90 maneuvers for myself. Mm-hmm. And I bet you guys have some that you guys do on for a regular sure. basis. I, I, I think probably the answer to this is both, right? It, it, which one's better for the shoulders? And yeah, core? I mean, if you're they're, talking about like yeah, you already acquired risk. these skills, yeah. then yeah, they're for, both they're but both to start, necessary. Start, I would start with clubs. the clubs. I noticed with the, with the mace, I get more core. Only I think it's because it's a long lever mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's heavy at the end. And, and you got to stabilize all that momentum and it's coming one, in. Yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah, I'll, I'll feel that more in my but, core. But I bet if, I bet if you were swinging clubs that were the same weight, it would be pretty, pretty fucking gnarly that's, too. That's a good point. Yeah. So, You'd yeah. have to swing. Cause that's a, I was point. thinking the same thing at first too, but yeah. then I thought, wait a second, well, our clubs in here, we're only swinging, what are the eights or twelves or whatever? Which are they? Huge. they make those steel clubs. Yeah. They can go up to like, you know, 20, 30, 40 pounds. Where'd the mace come from? I know that, are they both from India? India? I I believe so. I yeah. believe so. Yeah. The mace was originally they, wasn't it like was, Gada training? Is I that think, what they call it? Yeah. It was the wrestlers. I think so. Used it. Yeah. Was the mace to mimic sword fighting? Is that the story behind it? Yeah, I, 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 you know, it sure I, feels like it. I would, I would yeah. say some bullshit out there, but I, I would have to go back and kind of look, look, look that up. Yeah, I do I know, know that they used it in. Um, uh, it's like a traditional form of, you know, resistance training that they use. Mm-hmm. And if you go on YouTube, you can find some of these, like these these guys who swing these massive clubs. I mean, and, it's not that much different than what a sword would be, right? I mean, it's a little yeah. more evenly distributed on a yeah. sword than than the mace. But but then more. again, they used to use a mace too. Like they didn't just have a sword. They right. also use that's I mean, yeah. that's an actual weapon. It's definitely yeah. weapons training. Yeah. yeah. It's all like coming from that. And then, you know, a lot you, of times then you can keep one in your car. Yeah. Some shit. Yeah. Which I do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I think out, if you pull everybody. that out, somebody yeah. would just they wouldn't they wouldn't even you got it with they wouldn't mess with start yeah. swinging them. I'll do that one where I do the figure eights. Yeah. I'll just come right at them. Yeah. Our next question is from Julene Moose. Do you remember your first day as a personal trainer? Did you have any insecurities or fears going in? Uh, oh, I remember. Man. I remember my first day. <laughs> I remember the exact. I remember. So I. So I. I didn't know any better for a lot of the things that I did when I was young. I, I would just do it because I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to be able to, or that it was, uh, you know, something that was difficult or whatever. So 
I had been working at this point. Let's see, I'm 18 years old. I just turned 18, and you had to be 18 to be a personal trainer. So I was waiting uh, basically for that moment. So I turned 18, mm-hmm. and I went to the gym that I always worked out at. This was the 24 Fitness on Hillsdale before they, they grand op- re-grand opened it. And um, I went up to the front desk, and I had been working out there for maybe a couple years. And I said, can I talk to your manager? So, because uh, I'm interested in becoming a personal trainer. So he comes out. And I shake his hand and uh, I basically tell him I'm, I want to be a personal trainer because I have all this passion, whatever. And I pretty much started selling him on hiring me right then and there. So he says, okay, he goes, come on in on this day and we'll have an interview. So we, I came in, I sat down with him and I was just, I had zero, this is a funny thing. I wasn't nervous at all. I remember specific, like I remember it like it was yesterday. I wasn't nervous at all. Mm-hmm. I sat down, I shook his hand and uh, I was like, I'm going to, like I'm gonna impress this guy right now with how much how passionate I am. And I think I told him something like, you know, m- m- my goal is to be your best trainer, the best trainer in here. As soon as I I, I possibly Ugh. can, Ugh. probably came across. <laughs> you just gotta love hearing that. Some young yeah, whippers never come uh, and tell you that. You know, it's funny. I said all the right things. Like, like I don't know like this kid. Yeah. But if I was a hiring manager and some kid came in and said that to me, I'd be like, Pff. and that's what he did. He hired me right then on the spot and had me start. I think like two days later, like as soon as I possibly could. He had me start. So my very first day walking in, I had zero nerves, uh, no fear. But you have to consider I'd been in gyms. And I, first of all, I'd been working out since I was 13, 14. I'd been in gyms consistently, mm. nonstop, you know, five days a week at least since 15. So I'd go to YMCA, then I'd go to 24 Fitness. So I felt very at home. It wasn't an out. It was like I'd gone into you know the place yeah. I always go to. So well, t- and that's your personality too. You know, you you can kind of like get into that sort of a situation. You know, you're going to be able to talk yourself through it. You know, I, like, it, I, but the thing is, I didn't even think of that. I don't think I just walked in and just felt comfortable. Like here we go. Yeah. So I go in there, and there was a trainer I was supposed to shadow um, during these what were called fit start um, orientation. So what a fit start was is if you bought a membership and you didn't buy a personal training or anything else or whatever, they'd put you on a fit start. And what a fit start was, was a trainer taking you through three fit start sessions, showing you how to use the equipment, just acqu- acquainting you to the machines and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, it was a new thing. It was, they you were know, purple. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. The, they're like all in a row, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That long, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, we, that. and, um, you know, personal training for this whole gym, Hillsdale at the time was one of the bigger 24 fitnesses. Their total club sales was twelve thousand dollars a month in personal training, which was huge back then. They were actually one of the top performers That's in the day. Funny. The record was twenty five thousand dollars. I think it was by I can't remember what gym or twenty three something like that. Hmm. So I walk in and I'm supposed to shadow their top trainer, who like everybody I quickly saw everybody kind of worshipped him in the gym, all the staff, like, oh, that's so and so. He's the top trainer. Hmm. And and it was, I think it was like the middle, it was like mid month. And he had something like seventeen hundred dollars worth of sales up, which was massive. Like, Whoa. Yeah, for that, for you know, halfway through the month, seventeen hundred dollars. <laughs> like, close that with, shit. You know, one person. Yeah, with a club that's got like twelve thousand dollar goal, like that's huge, right? He's already sold, you know, more than ten percent of the thing by himself. Yeah. So it was this big thing. So I walk in, and he takes me through a fit start, and you know, I'm like super hype, like, okay, what are we gonna do? So he goes through this fit start, and then the person leaves, and I quickly realize, like, okay, you're just showing them equipment, like, and there's you're supposed to follow this protocol. There's this this purple piece of paper or whatever, like <laughs> placard or whatever. Yes. And you're supposed to follow it, right? Yeah, yeah, I so he said, uh, he goes, hey man, he goes, I want to take off. He goes, you want to just do the rest of my fit starts? Now I was supposed to follow him the whole day, <laughs> but this lazy motherfucker was like, do you want to just take these for me? I get to, I get to take off. Do you, you know, this them. is what 24 hour fitness did better than anybody. And everybody modeled this after them. Yeah. Like yeah. they were the, they, they started, they the, invented this. Oh man. They, there yeah. was a series of questions even that you were supposed to ask them and it was all leading to the sale. I mean, yeah. it was yeah. just, but but for personal training, it was a bit undeveloped, but you could see that they were trying to apply it, right? So he leaves. So now I'm left with, I think, two or three fit start appointments that were supposed to come in. So I'm like, he's like, are you sure you know? I'm like, yeah, I know how to do it. So I took the purple pa- piece of paper and I threw it on the, paper, on the, on the, on the, on the desk because who's going to use that? And my first one showed up and I took them back to the, to the back desk and we talked about their goals and they hired me for 10 sessions. Then my second appointment showed up. I, sh- I sat down at the desk talked to them about their goals, showed them a couple exercises, and they hired me for 10 sessions. And then my third appointment comes in. Now, before my third appointment comes in, the general manager pulls me aside. And it was a, uh, what was her name? Darcy. She pulls me inside in the office and she goes, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, what are you saying to these people? Yeah. You just sold two 
10 session packages. What are you saying? And I'm like, I'm just talking about personal training and fitness. And, and I had no clue like that what I was doing was crazy or whatever. So she's like, okay. So the next one comes in. It's a kid. He walks in, same thing, and he walks out. So she comes over. She goes, ah. She goes, yeah, most of them aren't going to get anything. Like, I'm like, no, no, no. He went to go get his mom. She walks in. <laughs> she walks in. They bought like 20 sessions. I, I think I hit what he was hitting or I outsold him. Over, over the next day or two, so over, within two days, and then by that month I hit $7,000, which was a huge, you know, within a two or three week period, and I hadn't even been certified yet, because they put me in there. <laughs> so great. They put me in there before I got <laughs> certified, so I had all these people waiting for me. But So I had no, I, it was it was one of those things, I went in, man, and it was, and I've only felt that that feeling two other times in my life, where I go in, and I immediately feel like, this is what I'm supposed to do, and that was personal training Day one for me. So, do you remember your first day, Justin? Um, I was trying to think about my first day because initially I started at the Santa Cruz, um, the 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 one there, and then they were like kind of throwing me around. They're like, at the end of it, kind of closed me on the idea of like being able to get more shifts and all that if I went over into San Jose and if I was open to that. And we got a guy that is looking for somebody, and they mentioned your name. And, uh, so then I ended up going over to Hillsdale and, and doing that. But, uh, what I really do remember, which I think I went through all that, <clears throat> that, that entire process of kind of like shadowing and trying to learn. And this is when Nick was there too with me. Mm-hmm. Um, what my most memorable, like the beginning and start was when we got our first actual client ourselves. And so what I remember most distinctively was, cold calling a bunch of people one day and then actually have, you know, these appointments booked up. And then like that, that first day I had like, I had like six appointments, I think back to back. And the very first, the very first one that, that came in Allen, um, I remember being so fucking nervous, right? Cause I, I felt like, yeah, I, I know everything I have trained this way, like my entire <laughs> existence, you know, and did like high level college, you know, I had like strength conditioning coaches. And so I felt like I knew what I was talking about, but I didn't like unfamiliar environments and, and, and me trying to, like, I'm a perfectionist. Like, so I'm really hard on myself. Like I, I never thought like I was going to be a good trainer for a while. You know, mm-hmm. I just knew that in my head. I was like, oh, I got to fucking work at this, you know? And so he's sitting in there with me and I'm just kind of describing, I'm asking him a lot about, you know, what, it, what he's trying to accomplish. And, you know, he's a cyclist and kind of how I would train him and all these kinds of different things I would do with him, whatever, you know, how about we go talk more on the floor? I'm kind of walking him around and showing him all this. And, I'm, and then, so he's just kind of sitting there like, okay, you know what? I'm like, so I don't know. You want to do like, 10 sessions or something. And then he's like, he's like, yep, let's do it. And then, so I, I closed him on that, which was like stupid. I wasn't even like a closer yet. You know, <laughs> I was just like, I would get all these people to sign up with me just because it was like, <laughs> I think they're just relaxed, you know? And they, they knew that I was just like, I'm, I'm going to take care of you. Don't, you know, don't even worry about it. How, you know, going fast forward, Alan, my very first ever anything I had him till the very, until we had to transition to this business. Oh, wow. So the very first person I had forever. And I'm very proud of that. Oh yeah. There's no, that's, I, that's always a good sign of a really good trainer too. When they've had yeah. their clients for a really long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, to be, to be a little bit different and transparent, you know, than Sal and I'm sure you as well. Um, you know, it, like I was very nervous going into my first day and, and making an impression and, um, you know, insecurities and, um, you know, going through that whole process, I was like, par- you know, like panic attack. And so like, that's why he thought I was so quiet. And cause like what I do when I get into uncomfortable situations like that, is I pull way back and I observe and I, and I look at everybody and I look at the top person and I look at, you know, how they're interacting with their clients and like, and I'm taking all in all this data and I'm, it's, it's all being absorbed and I'm very, very much learning, uh, by watching and, and, uh, listening. And so, <clears throat> yeah, so I, I just, I had to take, it, it took me a little bit of a, of, of a time to kind of ramp up, but then once I started to get it and get the cadence and all that, like things really See, this is, clicked. This is, this is cool. Cause we were so different, but yeah. you were a top trainer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just goes to show. I mean, it, 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 I had to work for it. You it know? But, like, my, but so, my point is like, yeah. you know what I mean? Very different, very but different. very successful. But that's, you yeah. did very well. Well, this is what always, uh, I think, drew us together too, was that 
I saw that in him and I knew that a lot of where my weakness was, his strengths were, you know, so we complement each other as working together. We worked really well together because of that. Yep. Um, so that for me, I learned a lot of the, the Schaefer technique. Yeah. <laughs> I became That's a closer what, by he, default. He yeah. said, so he saw right through Sal's bullshit as soon as he saw him. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. He's like, I've seen this exact like, I know this, I know this <laughs> method. Yeah, come on, man. Come on. I know you. No, so actually, um, of course, you know, very, very similar to Sal on so many levels. It's crazy. It, and listening to him, I get so engaged in the story because you tell that story. And, you know, unless you've, you know, you've worked in the, the company or a company like that, I guess, uh, it, you don't realize how rare that is. Like, that's extremely rare, that story you're sharing. You're talking about a huge company that has a uh, hundred, I mean, shit, were they a hundred thousand plus employees? Mm-hmm. I mean, they've got four or 500 gyms and each one's got probably a hundred employees. So we'll do the math. I, they got a ton of, and a ton of execs. So huge company and tons of trainers. And like, that just doesn't happen. Like, and that's like, you're, you're not just number one in your area or region or state. You're like one in the company. And then for, and then on top of that scenarios like that first day doing something like that, it's like, it's such a one-off and it's unreal. Yeah. And it's crazy because I used to, I came in and when I, when I, my first day, real similar to, I came in to get a membership. I'd already worked out for like three or four years with my buddies. I didn't know shit. But I was already interested. I was heading towards Kines. So I, I knew I wanted to be a trainer or in that field. And so I'd actually bought a national certification while I was going to junior college. And I came over to get a membership at 24 Hour Fitness. And very similar, basically almost gave me or gave me the jo- uh, job right there, then and there. I had to come the next day and do like this little test that was really basic and simple. I passed it. Nothing impressive. Because I knew I didn't know very much, but I knew enough. I'd been working out for a while, and I had this national cert that I was reading through, and I was really into it. I was really in I, I, all the information I was learning was counter to what I had been reading in magazines and seeing on TV and being told from by others. So I was instantly fascinated by learning about the body, learning about how it moves, learning learning about everything I could consume. I did know that I didn't know shit, but what I did realize really quick. And I came in confident because I did know that the people that I was going to be helping, I would know more than them. And I knew that like I had a little bit to give and, and I knew a little bit, I knew a lot about a little bit. And so I would just share that one thing I knew and I would share it to death. Like <laughs> literally, like I, like when I remember, and I remember like l- uh, each time I learned something, like when I learned about the core, like, like self myofascial like, release. Like, like, yeah. Yeah. I would just, I would dive into that, that subject. Yeah. Right. So I would take, I would learn something new that was fascinating to me that, that I was taught and then I would dive deeper into it. And then that's I, my client, my poor clients that were with me for that first like six months, like that's all they heard about. And then the next ones heard <laughs> that. And then I, I piled some new knowledge on yeah. that. And I was never afraid, of, just like I am to the, to this day, like I'm never afraid to to share what I know in fear of saying something wrong and and then somebody making fun of me or like I've, I've never had that that fear. Like I'd much rather put myself out there and help somebody else because I know for sure there's tons of people that I can help, even though there's some that that may not be impressed or I don't know enough in that subject that they're not going to entertain or listen to what I have to say. I don't give a fuck about them. I care about all the other people mm-hmm. that were just like me that were trying to learn about themselves and learn about their body. And they didn't realize that a lot of the shit they were doing was the wrong shit, even though they read it somewhere and they believed it, you know, then that was me. And I was learning really quick that, holy shit. It's not what we all thought, you know, and I was so eager to share that, that it was very easy for me. And my very first appointment, I'll never forget it because I had a buddy uh, who was two years older than me um, and had already been working in the company for uh, two years. And he was one of the top guys. And he had, he was always spending time with me, like when I was going through like the whole, you know, they used to have this little 24 hour fitness university. You have to go for a week and go through the schooling. And then your first 20 hours, they're teaching you all the protocol bullshit, right? And so the, all that, I, that my first time seeing a client, the very first appointment I got was a 5 a.m. appointment. And it was my buddy who pawned it off on me because he didn't want to take it because it was at five o'clock in the morning. It's a free appointment. And, you know, the, the average 
uh, gym closes at like 14 to 20 percent of these appointments. So that's it's a very low chance that you're going to get somebody to buy personal training. I don't know this at this point. You know, I'm just a young kid who wants to work. So much better to not know. Sometimes. Oh, oh, totally right. And he's he offered up an appointment. I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, for sure, I'll take it. You know, like a, it's my first free appointment, first appointment, and I didn't have to book it. Like I was stoked to take it. And, uh, you know, I knew, and when she showed up, like she was only like 23 or 24 years old and she was a waitress and, uh, I sold her 18 personal training sessions, which I think that goes for like, it was went for like 900 and something, mm. like 999, I think is what it was. And back then you could do like half down on a contract and I, <coughs> I convinced her to get, you know, all 18 sessions instead of do buying half and it. Half. Instead, yeah. And do half and half. And, you know, uh, he, my buddy came into work at like nine or 10 and he strolls in and he saw that I'd so he's like, what the fuck? You sold that girl, that little girl. Yeah. Like he was so pissed that he, I had sold that, and he want to know what. And that was kind of. Now he probably is thinking like, oh, you know, my luck. There are someone who just wanted to oh, buy totally. personal training. Yeah, yeah. Not he, realizing that he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah I got a lot of that early on. So I, I, I was, you know, um, but I feel bad. There, there yeah. was definitely moments though uh, where I did get, I, I got nervous, which is the same nerves I, I got when we first were podcasting, and we were hanging around some of these like fucking brilliant minds, you know? And so when I get a client that I would know is brilliant, a doctor, you know, like I would get nervous like that. I'm like, you know, like- They're gonna smell me out. Yeah, yeah. like I, I gotta be very yeah. careful on on what I say because he'll know that I don't know nowhere near as much as he does. So those type of clients would make me a little nervous, but I was, what I was good at, I was a good communicator early. So I, when I get a, do so a doctor, I'd ask, I'd be talking to him the whole time. Yeah. I'd be, take, let me take care of the weights, but I want to know, I want to know as much as I got a doctor in front of me. I'm going to ask him as many questions as I possibly you, can yeah. and Adam, lear learn from him. You know? Adam, do you remember, cause I remember my, like some of my first uh, all staff meetings that I would conduct. Do you remember some of your first? Oh ones? yeah, dude. You know, what's funny is like, I'm thinking about it. Like I was never, again, I knew that's the other times so I said, there's three times in my life when I knew I was supposed to do that thing. For one was a personal trainer. One was when I, when I managed teams, and the second and the third was podcasting. But I remember my first, my first uh, all staff meeting as a fitness manager. Uh, we had this big meeting. The general manager's doing their thing. Everybody's in the in the back. So it's like this, you know, I don't know how many employees were there. Forty employees, and you know, I'm an 18 year old kid, right? And I'm standing next to him. Mm. And no, uh, yeah, her. She was still the GM. And uh, she's doing her thing. And then she goes, okay, Sal would like to say a few things. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so I pulled a table. Yes. I pulled a table over in the middle of everybody and I stood on the table. <laughs> and I did my whole meeting standing on the table. like That's great. And just, I mean, I'm sure half the people in there you were like, who's this? from your chest. Like, who's this motherfucker yeah. telling yeah. us what we can do and what we can't do? And the other half were excited. And I remember after that, there was this one trainer that worked for me who he saw me become a trainer and then he had been there for a long time and he was this fucking juice head dude. He's probably in his, mm -hmm. he, he was a lot older than me, but you know, thinking I'm 18, he was probably in his late twenties, I'm sure. And he comes in, he, he is not, you could tell he's not excited about what I'm talking about at all. Yeah. Yeah. So afterwards I go up to him, God, what was his name? I think his name was Sean. I'm like, Sean, was there anything I said that you didn't, you know? And he goes, look, he goes, I've been a trainer way longer than you've even been working out. This is exact words way longer than you've been working out. I'm not going to change my system. It works just fine. So I said, okay. <laughs> so many stubborn so, fucks. Yeah. yeah. I said, I, I said, don't have an ego. I said, oh really? And I was assertive as fuck. You think yeah. I'm bad now? I, when I was a kid, I was way worse. <laughs> I was like, oh really? And he was fucking huge, right? Yeah. I said, that's funny. I said, can you come to my office for a second? We sat down and I said, I need you to get your, I need you to get your shit and leave and not come back. I <laughs> just fired like him. that. I didn't even know I could fire. Like, uh, I didn't know that there was a process. <laughs> Back then it was cool. You could get away with some no, shit. No, like even then there was a process, dude. Because uh, yeah. I got it in takes trouble forever to fire people. No, I can't. He's, oh like, he's like, "Are you firing me right now?" Yeah. I said, "Yes, I am." He goes, "I dare you." I said, "I just did. Get your shit and get the fuck out." Literally, what I told him. And he walked out, and the GM was like, "Dude, you can't. What, what are you trying to do?" And I'm like, "Trust me." Anyway, we ended up killing it. But I made that nice example with him. Nobody ever said that again. <laughs> that's not. That's, 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 that's like, not like the only prison time yard that. shit right there, dude. <laughs> Because when they made me the manager, when I'm like, fight the biggest guy over there. Ah. When they made me the manager, you know, like again, I'm a kid. I don't really know how it yeah, works. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm the manager. Just, I'll, do, I'll do the fuck I want. <laughs> you're fired, motherfucker. If you're not listening to me, oh, yeah. they the biggest, booted him. You know, ogre. Ah. Yeah, I think I think firing and hiring dominance. process was. Uh, there, I probably went through a more growth and uh, nerves <laughs> through hiring and firing people than I ever did. Like just being a trainer, because I when I like you I did said, a group fire. 
I did. Yes, right. <laughs> you actually fired a group of people okay. all at the same time. Everybody. I fired eight, dude. Eight people in one city. Yeah, I don't man. really want to make money this well, month. It was crazy. You go. Well, you know, I w- it was actually not long after the the first story because it was only it was uh, six months later I, they promoted me to assistant fitness manager. Then a year later uh, was when I made the decision to go full on, you know, twenty four, take the management position, and started working full time. And then I inherited my staff that I worked with. That's always tough. so. I was the new guy. Everybody had already still been working there, so so they saw you as a trainer come up and then become their manager. Yes, yeah. and you're some young kid. And, yeah, I, I, I was. That's exactly what I, I was. Younger than all of them. Yeah. I was the youngest, and I was the youngest in the company. Mm-hmm. So I was the I was young younger than all of them, and I'd only been in the company for about a year, year and a half, and I had like 16 trainers, and and they all we were all we all got along great when we worked together, and then what ended up happening when rules came in and I had to manage and do shit. You know, of course, the ones that were buddies with me. And I started at that point, I was really maturing and I was trying to separate business and hanging out. Because when we first were all trainers together, we'd go party, drink together, hang out together. And now I'm in the boss position. That was a real hard. And to them, you're like selling out now. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Totally. So, I, and I let it go on way longer than I should have. And that was a, this was a big lesson for me. Were you getting like a 401k? You know? <laughs> huh? this, was a, this was a major lesson for me in business. And I, I share this with uh, anybody that's in a similar role. When you know that you have a cancer um, in in your group, to cut it off right away and not let it fester because that should spread. It will spread and it will poison an entire really good staff that you have. And one one single cancer can do that. And this was an example that I had only one one of them, and it was the one actually who was the closest to me was the one that began like kind of the shit talking. And I just kind of let it go because I knew I knew inside, you know, he's probably upset he didn't get promoted and he didn't get up there and. I was still fine with him. I had to manage him. So, of course, I had to keep a very good relationship. And I understood why he was bitter, but I would hear him talking more and more shit. Like, and then it was starting to get back to me when I'd bring on a new person I'm hiring. They're, of course, they have more loyal to me. They just, they just met me and then they would come back and tell me information. And I remember being like, I'm not going to fire this kid for being dramatic and talking shit about me. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know why he's doing that. I got to run a business here. But then, that kept festering and festering. And then, it, then he started poisoning the ones that were coming in new. And then, before you knew it, I had like, eight people now that are on my staff that no longer had my back like I had earlier. And I, and I saw the revenue dip and everything. And I remember it was the first time I could, cause just like in leading or in training, when I got into a leadership role, you know, I took off too, as far as, you know, crushing goal every month. And this was my first like little slowing down, like, Oh shit, I'm human. You know, like mm-hmm. I'm not going to just keep smashing goal every month. And it was a huge reality check for me. And it was my staff and I remember sitting in this room and there's just, you know, all of them are sitting down. It was one of these, one of these meetings that you're talking about. And I'm fuck, I'm only 20, 20 or 21 years old this time. And I'm talking to all of them and I went around and I finally said, Hey, um, I want you guys to be honest with me right now. This is very important. You know, and I said, we're going to go around the room and I want you to raise your hand, uh, if you like working for me. And I, and, and each person kind of went around and if you have anything you want to say or get off your chest, let's get it off now. And Everyone and a couple of people did say something. Oh, I just I feel like you're being real hard on us. But you know, a couple voiced their their reasons reason being, and then the, all the ones that uh, didn't have a uh, raise their hand and were happy working, I uh, asked them to leave, and then I talked to each one of the eight uh, individually and basically told them they had a choice that I'm either going to fire them today or they can go leave on their own, and I'll send. And basically, what I did was got all eight of them to quit. Quit. Mm. Because uh, yeah, if I were to, yeah. if I were to term, it was a longer paper process. Yeah, if exactly. I was going to term, and I, easier, and I knew yeah. that, and they had already said they weren't happy working there, and I'd already confirmed to them that I was going to fire them. So if you would rather leave on good terms and a mm. recommendation to another gym or another place you go to, it's probably in your best interest to head over to the OM's office. And she comes running out after she's got four of them on her couch. She can't fit anybody <laughs> more else in her office. And she's like, how many are you sending today? And I'm all these, all eight of these motherfuckers yeah, are going today. Coming. Yeah. So, and it was, you know, scary because it cut my staff in half and I thought, Oh my God, how am I going to do this? All these clients. And it freaked you worked me. your ass off. Is oh, what you yeah, did. yeah. I worked my ass off and we made more money the very next month than we did the previous two. And it was a, uh, it was a no brainer, but you know, it's, uh, I, it definitely was a, a hard situation for me and it was a long process and it was a learning lesson, even though it has nothing to do really with. <laughs> we just had to tell those it's stories. All right, it's a great story. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Excellent. Uh, check it out. 30 days of coaching still available and it's still free at mindpumpmedia.com. Also check us out on Instagram. If you want us to answer one of your questions in one of these episodes, go over to mind pump media on Instagram and ask your question underneath the qua meme 
You can also find our personal pages on Instagram. Mine is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam. And Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.